to be talking about our fourth yoga board on the yoga kleshas. And the kleshas are five different places where we get stuck and things start to cause us suffering. So the thing that I love about the kleshas is that they build on themselves really nicely. If you go through the five in order, um, the first klesha is really the root of everything. It's that forgetting of the true self. And then we start to build from there, um, working on identification with the ego specifically. So the ego being the false self and having that confusion of thinking that the ego is right. Then we come into the third klesha, which is raga. And raga is when we seek pleasure or we always want things to be good. These are the things that we pull toward ourselves. When we get to the fourth klesha, which is devesha, it goes really closely with raga in that it's the flip side of raga. And devesha is trying to avoid discomfort or avoid things that are uncomfortable. So you can see that Raga is what we try to pull toward ourselves. It's what we want to happen. It's our hopes for the future. And then Devesha is the opposite of that. It's the things that we push away. It's the things that we don't want to happen. It's specifically the things that we are fearful or worried about happening. And you can see how that is a big source of suffering in our lives. And in the video prior to this, we talked about Raga as something where we're resisting that natural up and down flow of life, right? Things can be good at certain times and enjoyable, and then things can be difficult for a period of time, and there's always this fluctuation. We're never in that one stagnant spot where things are all good or all bad. There's usually a mixture, and it vacillates. It goes back and forth. But what happens is we start to have suffering when we think that we can control what's going to happen. When we have this attachment in Raga, we're trying to stay in that pleasurable experience. We don't want it to leave. And when we go into that space of Devesha, we're trying to avoid all things that we think will be uncomfortable. So the issue comes up that, okay, so we try to do things that we think are pleasurable, but sometimes those things will end up causing us suffering. And um, an example of that would be an addiction. So if you started out um, using a certain substance and it's enjoyable, we'll say alcohol would be a good example. You go to a party, you have a few drinks, and it's fun and you feel very sociable and it's a good experience. So that pleasurable experience, you want to recreate it. So the next time you drink, you do the same thing. Maybe you drink a little bit more because you want to have more fun. And when that pattern starts to continue and continue and you're using that process as a way to seek pleasure, eventually it turns to the flip side and it becomes something that has too much control over you and ends up causing suffering anyway. Um, the same sort of process can happen with devesha, where when you're trying to avoid things that are uncomfortable, in the end it's going to cause you suffering because you might have situations where you have to do something like public speaking, or a lot of people really don't like public speaking, but it's something that would help you in this process of growth and experience and give you a lot of exposure to other people. It might be something that you need to be comfortable with for a new job. And if you were able to face that fear of speaking in front of people and get comfortable with that, it would take you to a whole nother level of growth in your life. But because you're stuck in devesha, you're pushing that away and you're avoiding it, even though it means this lack of growth. So in the end, it ends up causing suffering anyway. So this is what the kleshas are trying to teach us that when we grasp things and we resist that natural flow, there's going to be this stagnation and we're not going to get what we need to learn out of the experience. Because a lot of times the experience that we go through and the end result of it can really be in different places. So there's, um, there's an interesting story and I'm not going to go through the whole story, but um, it's a story about a family that has a farm and they have it's a husband and wife and a son and they go through this whole process of um, a horse comes to the farm and they think oh how wonderful we got this horse this is great 
um, this would be a pleasurable experience. We got a free horse. So now the son goes out riding on the horse and the son falls off the horse and breaks his leg terribly. And the mother says, oh, this is an awful thing. This is very bad. Um, and then the army comes to town recruiting any young boys of fighting age. Well, since the son had a broken leg, he couldn't be taken into the army. So it goes on and on like this, and you can see where things that were judged by the ego to be either good or bad had a little bit of both in it. There's usually a mixture. Um, and I'll say a lot when people are going through really difficult experiences, you can have this process of practicing gratitude because there's usually something that you can be grateful for even in that experience, but we tend to forget it, we tend to overlook it. But also to look for the helpers. When there's a tragedy or some kind of a natural disaster, you can find some comfort in looking for the people that are offering help and um, very selflessly giving their time and their energy to help people that they probably don't even know to recover from that. So you can see even in this really tragic experience, there's this other element of good. It's usually very much a mixture. There's not that experience of something being completely good or completely bad. Um, Raga and Devesha are the two sides of the coin. So there's this very close relationship between them, even though they seem like they would be opposites. But keep in mind that the ego likes to put very specific labels on things. It makes it very clear cut and easy to say yes or no, good or bad. Um, but the ego is going to not always know the best thing for what we need on our journey. And I love this quote at the bottom that says, sometimes what you're most afraid of doing is the very thing that will set you free. When we talk about fear in yoga class, um, I think about fear as something where if there's something that you're afraid of, and I'll come back to that example of public speaking. Say you don't like speaking in front of a group and you've turned down some opportunities that you might have had to do that because of that fear that you had. Well, the more that you do that, the stronger that fear is going to grow, right? So if somebody else comes and you have this opportunity to speak in front of a group, and the fear will start to bubble up inside of you thinking, no, oh, well, I turned down all those other opportunities. I'm not a good public speaker. I can't do it. Where if maybe earlier on you had faced your fear and tried to manage your anxiety enough to get that experience of speaking in front of the group, getting a little bit of comfort with public speaking, and the next time you might still be nervous, you might still have that fear, but the fear isn't as strong. You've taken some of the power away from the fear because you faced it. So you gained this sense of some element of freedom. Maybe not all the fear is gone, but you've taken some of its power away because you've shown yourself that you were able to accomplish that task and there wasn't some catastrophic ending um, that took place when you were doing that public speaking. So making those little steps towards something that you're fearful of is going to start to reframe the way that the ego is judging it, the weight that it puts on it and the amount of fear and the amount of power that it has over you. So you're trying to take away the strength and the power that the fear holds over you. In yoga practice, there's usually certain poses that we tend to avoid, right? So Raga, we talked about seeking pleasure. Those are the things that you want to pull toward yourself. If you're doing your home practice, this is kind of a tricky thing. If you're doing your home practice and you're the one calling the shots, you're going to pick poses that you love. You're going to pick poses that you feel like you do well. You're going to pick the poses that you feel like feel really good in your body, which is nice, but it's probably not going to have as much of a growth and a learning experience as the other poses that you tend to avoid. So poses that are challenging, maybe it's difficult for you to hold a certain balance pose, or maybe um, doing a lot of arm strengthening poses is difficult for you because you don't feel like your arms are very strong. So you tend to avoid them, but your legs are strong. So you tend to do a lot of standing poses that require leg strength because you feel good with those but you're avoiding 
the poses that you would need to practice in order to have that experience of growth and to work on your areas where you're weak. That's a lot of the learning process in yoga. You watch your pattern. What do you draw toward you? What do you push away? And then you try to find a middle ground between that, right? You don't want to torture yourself and do the poses that you hate all the time and nothing but that. You want to find a balance between doing some of the poses that you really enjoy and then throwing in some challenge poses. Throw in some of the ones that are going to challenge your frustration tolerance. That's a really important thing when you're doing balance poses especially. So many people get frustrated and then they just won't practice the pose anymore. But dealing with that frustration or dealing with the challenge and the struggle is such a central focus of what we do in our yoga practice. Because when you practice that on your mat in a balanced pose or whatever it might be, in life, when you find yourself in that same situation and you're feeling frustration and you're in some sort of a strong challenge, you're going to remember exactly how you dealt with that on your mat. You've already practiced it when you were doing yoga. So you have the skills, you just have to use that and put it in action in the rest of your life. So that's what the kleshas are trying to help us with. And keep in mind, the kleshas are some really high level stuff. We're not going to tackle raga and devasha in a day or two days or even probably in a year or so. The kleshas are things that are continuously being worked on, but we have to start from a place of being aware, knowing what the kleshas are, knowing what kinds of patterns we're going to see, so that during your practice or during your daily life, you'll notice, oh, I was trying to pull that toward me, I wanted that outcome to happen, I was experiencing raga, or I really just avoided doing such and such, that was my experience of devasha today. And then seeing if you can try to face those things head on when you notice them happening. But you'll have to practice it over and over and over. And that's why we call it a yoga practice. Because we'll forget, we practice to remind ourselves, and we'll forget again, and then we come back and remind ourselves. So that in itself is also how we work on our frustration tolerance, right? We start to think, okay, well, I know about Raga, and I know about Devesha, and I know about Asmita, and the ego identification, and all these other kleshas, but why can't I just dissolve them like that? <laughs> um, and that's because these are really deep-seated, deep-rooted habits that we have, and they're so common in everyday life, in all different situations, that it takes a lot of work, and a lot of awareness a lot of practice to start to create new patterns and new samskaras. But the one thing that I want you to walk away from this discussion about Raga and Devesha is to watch the natural flow of life and see how much you can let yourself go along with it. It doesn't mean letting go of effort or letting go of your motivation. You're still putting in just as much effort and you're still working just as hard but wherever that effort takes you is where it's going to go. Okay, so you don't necessarily always have control of what the outcome is going to be. We just have to learn how to roll with it. The practice that we're going to do for this, I focused around this concept of fear because I feel like avoidance and this fear of being in uncomfortable situations or difficult situations brings up a lot of fear. And when we're in a fear pattern, many of us have the experience of lower back tightness. Okay, And we can look at the population in general and know that lower back pain is one of the number one debilitating issues that people experience. And we also live in a culture where fear is really strong. Fear of all sorts of things. All you have to do is flip on the news for five minutes and you'll probably be in a fear pattern. So... Fear is something that we need to look at and notice when it rises up and be aware of the physical manifestations of fear. It's going to be a little bit different for everybody, but for a lot of us, it's lower back tightness or hip tightness. So the practice is going to be a lot of different spine movements, forward bending, child's pose, side bending, 
and some different lunge variations so that we can open up the psoas muscle. The psoas has a lot to do with our pelvic alignment and therefore our lower back alignment. And it has a strong connection to the diaphragm, the way that it crosses through the body. So it's going to have an impact on the way that we breathe, which we know if we're in a fear pattern, our breath is going to shift dramatically. It's going to be shorter and more restricted. It might rise up toward the chest more where we're trying to free up the area lower so that we can have that slow, deep belly breath that tells our body everything is okay. You can go with the flow. You don't have to have that strong grasp on raga and devasha or attachment and aversion. So I hope that you can join me for the practice to work on the fourth klesha, devasha. Thank you so much for watching. Namaste.